blood feuds. Randall McCoy is dead set on revenge for his kin who were murdered in cold blood. My name is Randall McCoy. I'm a peaceable man. But them Hatfields, they've been like a curse to us McCoys, going after me and my kin, killing my family. <laughs> my God, I'm here to stop them. Randall McCoy spends the years busy with his farm and family. Randall is especially fond of his daughter, Rosanna. Beautiful young lady. <laughs> to Rosanna and the rest of his children, Randall passes down his dedication to the Bible. But he kills your brother, you're never going to forget that. The theft of Randall's hogs causes his years of pent-up animosity to explode straight to the surface. All of you Hatfields are a bunch of thieving killers. I forgot what you did to my brother. Randall McCoy, you are surrounded. Come on out and face your fate. Randall recognizes that voice. It's Jim Vance, the man who murdered his sons and allegedly killed his brother Asa years earlier. Why are they here, Pa? What should we do? Alifair, go to your mother. Calvin, load up. Randall McCoy is not about to give himself up to the Hatfields and leave his family at their mercy. You Hatfields get away from my home and leave us alone. Smoke feeling everywhere and people running around. It looks like a war zone. But Randall McCoy isn't ready to give up just yet. You harm another member of my family, I'll kill you all. The allies are now formulating a plan to take the capital, Palermo. In charge is British commander Bernard Montgomery. You wanted something? Yes, we're moving the British 8th Army toward Messina in the morning. We're ready. It's been decided the Americans will stay here as rear guard and await further instruction. That'll be all. Patton and Montgomery were very contrasting figures. Montgomery is extremely cautious, very careful. Get me Patton. Yes. I wanted to repeat that you are to remain in the rear guard and by no means to move on Palermo. TV just rots your brain. It's garbage. Besides, it'll give us more time to spend together as a family. Get your homework done, okay? And no TV, no video games. What have I done? Or maybe I've been too hard on them. I'm just trying to be a good dad. I thought I'd have some trouble with Derek, but Alex? I don't know what I did wrong, Ricky. Get lost. <laughs> What's going on? Don't get me in your crap, Ricky. Talking about? You watched while I went crazy worrying about them. You freaking helped me look for them. Don't push me. And you know about raising kids? Look, what they need is a father. Me, not some overgrown 40-year-old teenager. Get your own life and stay away from my kids, or I promise you'll be sorry. This is the haunting of Jordan Ladd. Somebody's coming through. Um, I have a gentleman that I feel is your family here. It's 1901, Long Island. Inventor Nikola Tesla is constructing what he believes to be the world's first ever wireless messaging system based on his own exclusive patents for radio technology. But his dreams are dashed when the first transatlantic radio message is sent by someone else. So who beat Tesla to the punch and how? The man responsible for the message is Tesla's rival, Italian inventor, Guglielmo Marconi. Marconi has been working on long-distance transmissions for six years. 
After years of work, he was finally able to succeed in making this historic transmission across the Atlantic. But Tesla believes Marconi must have used his technology to make the transmission. And he's right. One night in 1968, he was driving along a highway in Nevada when he spotted someone on the side of the road. He came across an old man. He was disheveled, he was unkempt. Dumar says that rather than leave the stranger in the desert, he gave the man a lift back to Las Vegas. On the way, the man made several bizarre statements, including the claim that he was Howard Hughes. My staff and I are working round the clock to make certain these cowards brought to justice. Bob also avoids detection by making sure to pay taxes to the IRS. The IRS doesn't care how you make your money as long as you pay your tax. It was not considered illegal by the federal government as long as you filed returns. Bookies pay taxes.